everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and I'm back with another shoe painting tutorial. It's finally the part two to that first one I did where I showed you how to paint this pair with Sleeping Beauty Castle and World of Color on the other side. But first, before we get into the painting, I want to give you guys a little bit of a pep talk. Are you ready? Here goes. A lot of times I post pictures of my shoe artwork on social media like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. And I get a lot of really good comments from you guys, but a lot of the comments that I see are also kind of negative in a way, but not, not how you think. Uh, the way they're negative is it's a lot of times people will say, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, though you're so talented. I could never do anything like that. Those kind of comments where people have already given up on themselves before they've even started. And that's what I want to talk to you about before we get into the painting tutorial, is a lot of times when creating artwork or seeing other people's really, really good artwork, it like disheartens people a little bit and it kind of makes them unmotivated to do anything creative. So I want to start this off by letting you guys know that you can do this. Anybody can do this. This artwork that I did, like, I have no training. I, I mean, yes, there is a little bit of a natural, like, affinity to it. It's also practice. It's mostly practice, to be honest. But some people are naturally, like, really, really good at it. But even those that aren't really, really good at it, the key to making really cool-looking art is really just trying. It's actually picking up the paintbrush and trying. That's the hardest part, is getting started. So I just want to want to start you off with that. I seriously, honestly believe that you can do this. Anybody can do this. You just actually have to try. Like, I don't care who you are. A six-year-old could paint the way I paint if they tried hard enough. That's literally all it is. I, again, I have no special training, no anything other than I tried, and I keep trying. And the difference between some art that doesn't look as great as other ones and some that's really detailed and good and looks amazing, it's usually just the amount of effort you put into it, or as I say, when you decide to stop. So let's say I start painting something. It doesn't always look the greatest right off the bat. Sometimes people will be like, it's good enough, cool. And you see lumpy potato faces and I'm always against lumpy potato face characters or whatever. Uh, and I, I personally, it's just my personal preference. I don't like that. So I choose not to stop at that point. Not to say I don't create lumpy potato faces. Sure, I create plenty, but I take it forward. I go, I go further than that and I fix those mistakes. Because we're dealing with acrylic paint, any of these little like mess ups or anything I do, you can go over again. That's the beauty of acrylic paint. There's no messing up. You can always just paint over it or paint around it in a different color. It's super opaque, you can cover your mistakes. So there's never really a reason to let a mistake go other than you didn't want to work on it any further. So I hope that's kind of got you guys pepped up and ready and you're ready for the tutorial because we're gonna learn how to paint the world of color side to that wonderful pair of shoes, the first one that I did. And these are your two main tools today. A compass, the little metal thing with the pencil and the little pokey part, and also white paint. A ton, a ton of white paint. And uh, I usually use Liquitex Basics. They are, this giant tube right here was like 10 bucks and it lasts me for months and months and months of painting. Um, I use a lot of white, so I always go big on this one. You can buy smaller tubes for, I think like four to five dollars at your local craft store, but use a coupon. There's always 50 or 40% off coupons for most craft stores. So one of those and one of these are gonna be your main tool. You don't have to have the compass, but it helps make that Ferris wheel into a nice circle. Also brushes, don't forget paint brushes. You need those, they're kind of necessary to paint. <laughs> right? <laughs> but first we've got our little compass. I use a metal one, you can also get a plastic one. They're really nice, but they're gonna help us make this perfect circle that's gonna be the base for our Ferris wheel. All right, so here on the shoe, I don't wanna go past this middle line from the seam down towards the bottom. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I wanna make sure that my little metal point is far enough away from the bottom seam that cuts diagonally down and again hits that top or the, like, hits the bottom of that V. Not so much the top, but the bottom of that V. And I'll show you here in just a sec what that looks like with lines. See that circle I've got on the screen? I wanna make sure my compass lines up that way so that when I do turn it, it hits both that seam on the bottom and it hits the top little V area right there so that you can make a full circle and it doesn't get in the way. Again, use these little guidelines that I'm putting on the screen to kind of help you out and figure out where your little pointy part is because if it's not sticking in the right section, you're not gonna end up with a circle that fits quite right. 
Another thing I want to note is make sure there's something inside your shoes. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier if they're stuffed, so I usually put socks or something like that in there. Now I'm speeding up through this because all you have to do is really hold it steady and draw that on with pencil. Okay, now for our acrylic paint, I use, again, Liquitex Basics because I like it. It's flexible, waterproof, and it doesn't crack like the cheap stuff. Okay, so now that that's all out of the way, we're going to start painting in that circle with white paint. Uh, you're going to be using a very, very small brush, as fine a tip as you can find, because you don't want that circle line to be more than a few millimeters thick. Uh, one thing that might help prepping it is if you run a lighter over the shoe, it gets rid of a lot of those little hairs. Something I talked about in my other tutorial video, and there is a link to it down below. So now as we start to finish up this circle, you might want to make it a little bit thicker. But what we're going to do with this whole design is we're actually going to draw most of it out in white. And once we have our circle, you're going to go right down the center of it, and you can do it in any angle because there's going to be a ton of these lines. But you're going to want to dissect your circle into different quadrants. Here I've got it into four different quadrants. And now towards the center, I'm making kind of a diamond shape. I'm making it so it's a little bit thicker in the center. See what I'm doing there? They're putting a little angle on each one of those lines. And that's because if you look at the actual Ferris wheel, that's how it is. So now I'm going to go in between each one. Now I've got it divided into eight separate sections, and I'm kind of making a star. And again, as I'm going through there, I'm adding in a little bit of thickness right towards the center, just so they're not straight lines. They're more like these really long triangles that go through. And in between each one of those, I make another little spike. And you can see it's starting to come together just like the Ferris wheel looks. And again, what I'm going to be doing is going up along the side of this little crease here, and I'm going to start creating the outline for Paradise Pier, California Scream, and Roller Coaster. I do it above the seam. Sometimes I'll do it a little bit below the seam. It just depends on whatever you're comfortable with. But notice I've got two little arcing lines there, and here I'm going to build in my circle. This is actually the loop where the California Scream and Roller Coaster goes around and takes you upside down. So once that's all in place, you can kind of see where I'm placing it. I'm going to start making all of those little support beams. And they're little lines that I'm just literally separating by a couple millimeters. Just up and down, straight up and down lines. And I'm going to go through all of this this way. You can kind of see I'm touching over. There we go, there we go. And now I'm going to actually, while I let that dry, I'm going to move on to another part of the Ferris wheel. Now here at the Ferris wheel, I'm going to start extending those lines. You'll notice sometimes I will jump around back and forth. And that is to let parts of the shoe dry. That's so I can let a part dry, work on something else while that dries. This just helps me move a little bit quicker. And if I'm using all one color, even better. So now that I've got all those support lines done, I'm gonna go across them, kind of perpendicular to how they are, just so that it has this crosshatch kind of look to it. There we go, you can see it. Pretty good, pretty good. Now on the front section, I actually like to go diagonal. So you see here, instead of going perpendicular, this time I go diagonal. And once that's drying, I'm going to sit here and fill in the rest of my Ferris wheel. So once we have all the lines to my Ferris wheel, you can start to see how this is actually becoming a lot like Paradise Pier. There we go, fill in these tiny lines, and again, it does take a steady hand. I don't go this fast, I've actually sped it up so we're not here for the full two hours it takes me to uh, create this side of the shoe. Generally, I spend about two hours on the castle side and then another two hours on the Paradise Pier World of Color side. So once we've got our lovely little roller coaster and our Ferris wheel set, I like to go over and make sure my lines are thick enough, make sure everything's neat is the way I want it, because pretty soon we're gonna get into laying down the water. Okay, see these little lines I'm putting down? Right in the center, I start to make these little lines kind of arcing down like little steps. Some are longer than others, some are shorter. And this is because I want to create the effect of those world of color lights that are in long rows. So you see I'm creating little rows of white lines and I'm making them in this weird little shape. You can kind of see how I stagger them. And that's because if you're staring at it from across the pier, that's how you see them. Those straight lines are at an angle. So you see them kind of staggered towards the back. And there are some that are taller, some that are shorter, and it's because the water kind of goes all over the place. Okay, once my lines are laid out, I'm going to go fill in just on the bottom there. I'm going to create little splash marks 
just, you know, a little left to right with the paintbrush, just to make it look like that water is kind of splashing down. And it kind of gives it a, a more realistic looking effect. You see, just to the, the bottom of every single one of those. And again, you can do this however you like, but this is just my particular way of doing this whenever I create this design. All right, that is actually looking pretty good. Okay, so the next step is going to be to start laying in some color. Now, one thing that I do the same every time is on this inner portion of the Ferris wheel, I actually like to paint it yellow. Because if you look at the actual supports of the Ferris wheel, they are yellow. The rest of the Ferris wheel, all the in-between, is lights. So all those lights can change you know, in the middle of the night, depending on what part of the show it is, or if it's the pre-show, or just whatever's going on. So that I always leave different. But for the main lines of the Ferris wheel, I always do those in yellow. And I be sure to leave a little bit of white in the center of my Ferris wheel, because I'm going to be placing a Mickey head there a little bit later. All right, now for the second part of this tutorial, I actually had to record this at D23. I was invited by Maker Studios to come out and paint a pair live, so I actually painted this exact pair on stage in front of a bunch of people. So luckily they let me record it, and this is what you're going to be looking at right now. Now the fun part about this part of the tutorial is you can actually go crazy with it. Personally I have my own set of colors that I like to use in the world of color thing. Uh, you basically just go with the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, you know, all the way through and I just kind of do them in order. But I've done it differently every time, so I don't always use the same order. Sometimes I'll use different colors. It's really up to you, whatever you want to do. What I start with though is I start putting some color on each one of those fountain lines. And I try to just create a pattern in my head. Sometimes I'll alternate pink, then blue, then, you know, it, it's really up to you, whatever you think is gonna look good. Okay, and there it is, the little Paradise Pier sign in orange, you can see there at the bottom, just off frame. Now when I'm filling in the back of those little support beams, I actually don't paint directly over the white lines, I paint in between them, and it gives it kind of a look that they're still lit up and they're still white, but they have like a glow to them. So that's a little hint that I do when I do it, but again, feel free to paint this however you want. Once that's done, I move on to the rest of the Ferris wheel, and I'll put each one of those little lines in between the main yellow supports there. I'll put a different color and I'll follow it up on the edges of the wheel in that same color until we hit the next line. And again, feel free to do this however you want. It's your shoe, go crazy, have fun. Okay, now what sometimes I'll do while I let that dry is I'll get a little bit of white out and I'll start to uh, kind of touch up some of the details. I'll make sure my white circles are completely circles. And another thing I like to do is on these little fountains you see at the bottom that we've all laid out, all those tiny little fountains, they look good like that with the color, but since I want them to look like they're glowing and they're lit up, I'll take some white paint and very carefully go right up the middle of them. You can see I'm doing it here, putting just a little bit of white paint in between that color on the sides because it really makes it look like they're lit up and it gives them that effect that it's water. So you can be a little bit sloppy with it because water isn't perfect, it's not a perfect straight line. It moves and it kind of gets all over the place. So doing that gives it just an extra little glow that makes the whole design look a bit more complete.
Now one of the last parts you have to do on this design is to add a Mickey Mouse. So I would suggest really use reference photos and I'll have them on uh, dano.net. There's a whole section where I break this down in case you don't want to watch the video. I've got reference photos for you. but. Use reference photos when making your Mickey because he is very tiny, he's very easy to mess up, and you want to make sure your ears aren't too big, you want to make sure you get the eyes just right and the placement of the nose just under the center of the circle. And it's, it's kind of hard to show you in such a small frame here, especially with my head in the way, but it's real small and it's real easy to do, but no matter what, make sure you're having fun when you're doing it. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check dano.net for more of a detailed look with pictures if you don't want to sit and watch the video a billion times. I really appreciate you guys coming over to the Dano channel and watching and learning from me. Send me photos. If you guys have found this interesting or have you made your own pair, send me photos. I've had a lot of people do it so far and it's really cool. I mean, take a look. These are people who've told me they can't paint or they've never painted before. Anybody can do this. I'm telling you, you can do it. It's going to be awesome. So go back through, watch the video again, or just go to dano.net. And if you feel like supporting me, there is a donate button down there. Also, I sell Dano Channel t-shirts, and I can custom paint hats for you. And there's more info about that down below, or just go to dano.spreadshirt.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye! I'm standing in Cinderella's shower.